What's good with it, family? How y'all doing? This is Mario Matthews, owner and operator of Minas Till Dawn Productions and author of the new book, Dream No More, Rise of a Lion. Dream No More, Rise of a Lion is a sci-fi fantasy novel featuring Lyon, the young black boy who is on his quest to save his family from an all-powerful sorceress. Join Lyon, Dior, and Lisa on their quest as they retrace their steps back to where they found Lyon upon him being injured and nursed back to him, and also to help him learn the skills necessary for the journey ahead. Dream No More Rise of a Lion is in stores right now on Amazon and Lulu.com. It is a family-friendly book, no curse words. It There, there is themes of violence in it. Uh, however, it's easy to share with friends and family, and it's written in a unique scripted, simplified scripted format. Dream No More Rise of a Lion. All right, family. Hope everybody's been doing good. Uh, I've been on a grind. Hope y'all been chilling, doing y'all thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like to come today because we're going to have this topic today about uh, about ADOS and our role in local politics. You feel me? So lately, there's been a big push uh, for, you know, I- individual ADOS people around the country to start local chapters in order to uh, navigate the political landscape of their lo- locale, you know, your, their locale. And uh, I want to start in, in uh, you know, my endeavors to do just that. You see what I'm saying? I want to help uh, start the groundwork, uh, lay the foundation for this thing uh, in Seattle in particular. You see what I'm saying? So I am in Seattle. And uh, recently, uh, just today, earlier this morning, I released a new article in regards to uh, a very pressing issue uh, that is encompassing Seattle and, well, Washington State's politics as far as um, the the new initiative that is about to become uh, a sort of uh, hot-button issue in politics right now in Seattle. So, Initiative I-1000. Initiative I-1000 is actually an initiative that is going to reinstate affirmative action here in Seattle. And uh, for those who don't know, affirmative action actually has been banned in, uh, in Washington State for the past 20 years. Uh, reason being, uh, I... I-200 was passed in 1998 uh, in the state of of Washington that uh, essentially banned affirmative action under the uh, wording of, you know, uh, no persons, you know, shall have, uh, you know, uh, preferential treatment, you know, in regards to race, ethnicity, that type of deal. You see what I'm saying? Um, However, it had no provisions within the uh, initiative to protect affirmative action, essentially gutting it. Now, I actually wrote an article about this. I will post that in the link in the description. And uh, we're just going to go through this article and talk a bit about it and talk a bit about I-1000 and uh, why it is important. Why is it important for ADOS, black ADOS people in the state of Washington to finally start to get our foot in the game when it comes to politics and when it comes to protecting our interest. Okay? So let's get through this, shall we? All right. So let's read through the article. So... The article is called The Curious Case of Seattle's I-1000. ADOS family, we've been, we've been the butt of a horrid joke for the last 400 years. At the pleasure of those who would pledge their allegiance to racism, white supremacy. Recent developments in the ADOS movement has many taking it upon themselves to begin the strategic groundwork of local political organization. This is my contribution to this endeavor. 
I have been living in Seattle, Washington for nine years. I was born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, eventually relocating to Arlington, Texas for four years with my family during the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Seattle has been a life transforming opportunity for me. I came here with dreams of starting my life as an adult with a professional career in tech as a millennial. I began, I began with a job as a, as a City Year Seattle King County Corps member, a working through AmeriCorps to give a year of my life to community service. I would then continue my community service work as the executive of communications at Seattle Central Student Leadership. I say this to say, although I haven't grown up in Seattle, I've seen my fair share of change in this area. Yet, I had to learn from local ADOS and other individual people who would consider themselves, who I would consider allies, the sheer amount of disrespect and socioeconomic political policing of blackness here in Seattle, which brings me to today's report about the recent Initiative 1000 proposal to be voted upon on November 5th by Washington State voters. Initiative 1000, which which full name is the Affirmative Action and Diversity Commission's me measure, supersedes Initiative 200 in two parts. One is to include sexual orientation, the presence of any sensory, mental, or physical disability, and honorable discharge veteran or military status. And two is to allow the state to remedy discrimination against or under uh, representation of disadvantaged groups as documented in the valid disparity study or proven in a court of law. For further reference, Initiative 200 currently bans discrimination and preferential treatment based on the characteristics of race, sex, color, ethnicity, na nation of origin, and age. However, Initiative 200 did not include a measure to uphold affirmative action, thus banning the law within Washington state. Initiative 200 has been in effect since 1998. That would be over 20 years of damage done with our birthright stolen and hijacked under our nose. Now, why do I say a thing like that? It is essentially because affirmative action was made very specifically to the black ADOS community as a redress for slavery, Jim Crow, redlining, convict leasing, mass incarceration, and all of the injustices that's been happening to our community since our time in this country. But I'm jumping ahead. Let's continue. ADOS family, you might be asking yourself, how did affirmative action become outlawed in a state as liberal as Washington? It all started back in 1996, where 10 Iman a white male conservative activist championed I-200 around the state of Washington, claiming that I-200 would make sure that everyone would be treated fairly regardless of race and other things. And when he debated Professor Carl Livingston at Seattle Central Community College in 1996, two years before I-200 would be passed, Tim Eyman made it clear that he believed racism wasn't a big issue in Washington, in the state of Washington, and black people shouldn't expect special treatment above anyone else. This is the logic that is being displayed in the wording of I-200 defined, defining the term preferential treatment. Isn't it interesting, ADOS family? We exist within a society that gives that has given preferential treatment to certain groups throughout American history. Yet, when it is time to pay the debt that is owed to black ADOS 
due to the institution of slavery, convict leasing, Jim Crow, race riots, mass incarceration, and the prolonged socioeconomic destitution of black American descendants of slavery, preferential treatment isn't what we need. No. Specific preferential treatment is exactly what we need. We are the orchestrators of this society. We built it on our backs. We are the ones who made this, this country as rich and prosperous as it is. And through all of the unfair, harsh hardships that racism, white supremacy has put our community under, we still survive, we still strive, we still moving on and we are still doing what is necessary to lay the groundwork for true fairness and justice. Despite the efforts of Professor Carl Livingston, I-200 would be passed by Washington state voters anyway. In an article posted on the South Seattle Emerald by Sherea Lane, shout out to Sherea, Professor, Professor Livingston, and shout out to Professor Livingston, real. Professor Livingston described his interactions with community members before I-200 would be placed on the ballot for statewide, for statewide vote. Quote, some made the argument that you really don't need affirmative action anymore, that you'll do fine without it, said Livingston. Some said it was a crutch, and a lot of people just gave up on trying to stop it. They said that if it passed in California, then it could pass here, and it did. After the passing of the initiative, Professor Livingston would spend the next 20 years fighting to repeal I-200. During this time, he further described the challenges he faced with Washington State Legislature uh, committee members. Quote, the representatives didn't want to hear it. They didn't believe there was a reason to repeal I-200, said Livingston. Some had the view that discrimination in Washington rarely happens. Eyes would roll and people would be like, why are we talking about this? So did you hear that family? Actual committee members in the Washington state legislator slouching and rolling their eyes at a black ADOS community leader expressing the need and concern for affirmative action for our communities here in Washington State. Now tell me, does that sound like liberal allies to you? Hmm? Does that sound like an ally? It's time we stop with the pity pat. You know what I'm saying? The patty cake. I it, it's it it's done, okay? We treat people as much as they treat us. We treat them exactly the same way. If you want our allegiance, you got to come to the table with some tangibles and negotiate. You come to us with respect. You come to us with the utmost regard. And you better understand our position in this society as the people who built it. Anything less will be intolerable or intolerable. Continuing, so much for liberal allies, eh? At this point, the obvious question is, why, would the, why were these people in Washington State, both community members and political representatives, 
able to get away with such blatant anti-black acts of aggression? The obvious answer is because racism, white supremacy, encourages the very culture itself to weaponize any and everything against black people. The not so obvious answer is because we have been allowing these anti-black acts of aggression to go unchallenged in business politics for the last 50 years. We, black ADOS, have failed to assist and support lifelong fighters like Professor Livingston. It has gotten so bad that our socioeconomic political enemies, whether liberal or conservative, have been emboldened enough to take over and or destroy laws that were specifically created to address systematic anti-black racism. And that's the truth. So don't come over here talking about, oh, why ADOS, why y'all just going after liberals? No, it's conservatives too. And I will show you that in a moment. But just understand that this is a bipartisan grassroots movement. We acknowledge the fact that there, there is rampant anti-black racism being on full display in all areas of political activity. And we are here to make sure that we give you hell every step of the way. Not just for ourselves, but for the numerous black, all the black families across the U.S., all of the black ADOS families that are on the, on the verge of, of homelessness. That's our responsibility. That's why we're doing this. That's why we are on the grind that we on. Real talk. Continuing. Affirmative action was specifically created to address the systematic economic destitution imposed on the black ADOS community by those who have sworn their allegiance to race and white supremacy. Now, just to be clear, that means anybody who pledged their allegiance to racism and white supremacy, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're Native American, whether they're from Mexico, whether they're from uh, Iran, it doesn't matter. I don't care what your ethnicity, race, color, creed is. It doesn't matter. If you pledge your allegiance to racism, white supremacy, you are an enemy. That's it. Done. Period. Continuing. Yet. Yeah. We've allowed our opposition to strike down the quotas po portion of affirmative action during the regents of the University of California versus Bach case. And to make matters worse, affirmative action is now being used to empower every minority group, undermining the primary group that it was attended for, contributing to the ever so present Black-white wealth gap. Let me be absolutely clear. The black ADOS community are not a part of this quote-unquote minority, uh, minority coalition that you guys like to spout. All this POC stuff, it's done. You want our cooperation? You come to the table and negotiate with tangibles in hand. If you don't have it, tough luck. We're done saving the world. We treat this like any other business transaction. You want to get something done with us as your allies? It's quite simple. Come to the table, negotiate with tangibles in hand. If you don't got that, 
What's up? I don't got I don't got nothing for you politically. It, it, it's that simple, bro. You want my vote for something? Come with tangibles in hand. Otherwise, you ain't saying nothing but a word. Nothing but a word. Continuing. Now, in two in 2019, I. 1,000 is in a favorable position to pass and repeal I-200. So far, supporting platforms for I-1000 has rallied numerous donors, raising an estimated $209,655.68, according to Ballotopia.com or .org. Sorry, Ballotopia.org. Excuse me. The supporting organizations and their contributors or contributions are as followed. And it gives you a list of, of, of the donors. Now, this list is a very interesting list. And when you get the opportunity to look at the article, please check this list out. Very telling. Continuing. Notice what I notice, ADOS family. None of the organization and people are black owned and they do not share black ADOS lineage, nor have there been any outreach efforts to black ADOS communities in regard to the political endeavors to work on I-1000. Michael McGavick, a Republican Irish American University of Washington alumni who is currently the CEO of Excel Group, provides insurance and reassurance risk of solutions throughout the world under the XL Catlin brand. Also serving as the formal chair, president, and CEO of Seiko Insurance. William Y. Excuse me, William Weyer, Weyerhauser serves as a vice president and secretary of Clearwater Management Company, Inc. And the Weyerhauser family was named one of uh, the 149th wealthiest family in America in 2015 at the tune of $1.7 billion dollars. Vulcan Inc. is Paul Allen's umbrella corporation. And you don't know who Paul Allen is. Look him up. He's, he, he, he's one of the wealthiest men in, in the world. And he owns a lot of Seattle's real estate. And that company is actually very, very far-reaching with its investments. You should check that out as well. Now, these are the key players... That is putting a lot of money behind this thing. And last but not least, the numerous Native American tribal organizations putting their bid in. ADOS, ask yourself, where was all this support to repeal I-200 in the last 20 years? And why support it now? Hmm? Well, now that sexual orientation, the, pres the presence of any sensory, mental, or physical disability, an honorable discharge veteran and military status is going to be added to the list of eligible factors to consider under affirmative action in the state of Washington, this, fur this will further undermine the original intent of of affirmative action rendering even more useless than before. There you go. You have special interest groups from all these other groups and all these other people who are not black ADOS putting their bid in to manipulate a law that was passed to address ADOS oppression under racism, white supremacy. This is what happens when you sleep at the wheel of politics. Your, com your community 
gets taken advantage of. Continuing. And what of the opponents to I-1000? Tim, Tim Iman is predictably still in favor of banning affirmative action. However, most notably, Washington Asians for Equality stands in opposition to the reinstatement of affirmative action in the state of Washington. Their argument is the same as Tim Iman's argument from the late 90s, claiming that giving preferential treatment to a group of people who have been systematically disenfranchised for the last 400 years is some form of reverse racism, a talking point that is identical to white wing conservative bigots. Now, with that being said, I want everybody to stop saying Asians do not do politics. Stop saying it. Stop. OK, the Asian community is just as involved in politics as any other community. And there is a specific reason for that. What is the reason? It's because politics is what dictates the rules of the land. If you have no say in how the rules of the land is constructed or constructed, and by definition, you are not taken into account when the rules are in play. You will always be out of bounds if you don't have a hand in constructing the rules. Continuing. So... Here are the sides to choose from in the state of Washington in regards to I-1000. On one side, a bipartisan bill on one side, bipartisan billionaires and minority organization. Let me let me do that one more time. On one side, bipartisan billionaires and minority co coalitions willfully hijacking a black ADOS community's political tool for redressing historic right supremacist terrorism, and on the other side, predictable white right-wing bigots and their Washington Asians of equality lapdogs. Now, if you actually go to the Washington Asians for Equality's website and read the recent article they released, and then go to the comment sections. To be honest, you won't even tell what who's 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 you, you don't even you can't even tell whether or not those are not white people. OK, they're in the comments spewing all kind of right wing hatred towards towards everybody. It, it, it don't even matter T towards even other, even other Asian people. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it's it's mind boggling, mind boggling. But that goes to show you, working against your own best interest, even if you're a black person, allowing our, allowing our birthright, affirmative action, a law specifically made for ADOS to address our problems, allowing it to be hijacked by other people who are not ADOS, who are Championing other agendas that has nothing to do with our community. No wonder why we're still in the same rut that we're in. Continuing. Yes, Washington State has a glob of foolishness for the black ADOS community to address. Some would say that it's a lost cause. But don't get too comfortable in other, in other states' ADOS family. Laws that have banned affirmative action within the state's jurisdictions are rampant throughout the union. And if, excuse me, and if it hasn't been banned, it has been warped to the point of including every other group drowning out black ADOS community members. Now, some critics would say, why is backing I-1000 a bad thing? 
Black people will benefit from it as well. Well, this is somewhat of a grossly inaccurate statement if you factor in two things, gentrification and mass incarceration. Seattle and Washington State in general has been experiencing a mass exodus of black people due to the rising cost of living since the 90s. Since I-200's reign in Washington State, the many black ADOS community members who should have been here to take advantage of this opportunity have been priced out of the market moving to other states. Likewise, black people are disproportionately represented in Washington state's prisons. These two factors, fueled by other factors such as the war on drugs, have left the black ADOS community with the unfair cost of racially targeted racist policies. So, what is the solution? Here. Point one. Acknowledge that the black ADOS community have been politically inactive to a detrimental extent for the past 50 years. Learn black ADOS history and what has been stolen from us in order to understand what is owed to us. Shouts out to Yvette Cornell and Antonio Moore. Number three, learn the political landscape of your local jurisdiction, and the conditions of your community. Point four, politically organized with black ADOS community members, activists, and allies who understand that the occurred disadvantage in ADOS life, starting from the institution of slavery, is the most consequential issue in ADOS life. Five, engage politicians. Vet them with unrelenting scrutiny, ensuring that ADOS-specific issues are addressed and the punishment of those who will pledge their allegiance to racism and white supremacy are firmly a part of their political agenda. 6. Punish politicians by supporting those who firmly stand to address ADOS-specific issues and the punishment of those who pledge their allegiance to racism and white supremacy, regardless of party affiliation. 7. Push for an initiative to break apart minorities, initi minority initiatives into separate initiatives with group-specific solutions to group-specific problems. What does that mean? That means... Black ADOS issues are our issues alone. Everybody else can have their own issues alone. Leave ours alone and we won't mess with yours. It's that simple. We won't stand in your way and we won't do anything to impede yours. But leave our stuff alone. And we demand politicians to break up these initiatives to only include us and everybody else have to get their own initiatives. It's that simple. Eight, demand restitution for the unlawful ban to affirmative action for all black ADOS community members in the state of Washington during the time of I-200 have been in effect. Just think about all of the missed opportunity for the past 50 years, not 50, well, yeah, 50 years, but for the past 20 years that I-200 has been in play in the state of Washington. Black people, listen to me. I-200 stifled our community opportunity. And we allow it to happen. Professor Livingston has been doing an amazing job for the past 20 years trying to get that thing repealed. However, it has been hijacked 
And when it comes back, all of the people who should have been able to benefit from it in the past 20 years are either locked up or they moved out. This is a case for restitution. I-200 was unlawful. And all of these other states who have banned affirmative action, it's all unlawful. Because we all know that racism is still a problem in America. And there should be no part of the union who has banned affirmative action in existence. And just as well, there should be no other special interest group leeching off of our birthright. Affirmative action was meant to address racism, white supremacy imposed upon the black community for the past 400 years. It is not meant for every other group on under the sun. It is meant for black ADOS people. We are at the bottom of the socioeconomic political stratosphere. We are on the we are under the ground. We are a caste in America. It was made specifically for us. And to hijack a tool that was made for us to make a living for our families, our community. You are telling us that you are not our ally. You didn't come to us to talk, to negotiate. You came here to take over. And enough is enough. Continuing. Before I continue, I just want to stress the point that restitution is needed. The state of Washington should do what is necessary to pay back all of the lost opportunity during the time of I-200 to the black ADOS community only. And lastly, never, engage, never disengage in the political process. Never engage in the political process without a black ADOS communal agenda first. It's going to be a fight to get our community where it needs to be in the, in the, specific North, the Pacific Northwest. And yet, no one is built for this fight better than the black ADOS community. It's time we get our stuff back. My name is Mario Matthews, owner and operator of Minutes Till Dawn Productions. Please like, please share, please subscribe. And if you want to join us on Patreon, we got exclusive content. Uh, I give out merchandise. Uh, I am going to actually uh, start putting up some deleted scenes to, to my book. So uh, certain people who you know, donate or, you know, certain people who uh, get a specific Patreon tier can be able to access. So please, please join us. Thank you for everything. Dream No More Rise of a Lion is in stores right now at Amazon and Lulu.com. And I hope to hear from y'all later, man. Y'all be cool. Love y'all. Everlast.